This video is sponsored by RVP Plus. The Epson LS12000B or the Sony 5000ES. Which one should you buy for your home theater? Let's discuss. All right guys, welcome to this projector shootout. And I put that in, in air quotes because I'm not a calibrator. I don't professionally calibrate TVs or projectors. I'm just going to be kind of doing a comparison between the Epson and the Sony since they're kind of in the same price range. They have some of the same, you know, specs and stuff like that and try to help you make a buying decision. Maybe you're trying to upgrade your your home theater to projection. Maybe this is your first time getting into projection or maybe you're like me. You had, you know, an Epson 5040 UB and you're looking to upgrade to not only something, you know, that's better in picture quality but also with laser so we're going to go through a couple of the specs first some of the specs on both on both projectors and then i'm going to do some you know video comparisons and you know do my best as i said i'm not professional i don't do this for a living so you know take everything i give you with a grain of salt so on the right we have the epson ls 12000b and on the left we have the sony 5000 es now, both of these projectors are laser projectors and the lamp life or the lamp life on both are rated up to 20,000 hours. Now, obviously, that's going to depend on which, you know, what setting you 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 are watching on. If you're watching on the highest setting all the time, but 20,000 hours, that's I mean, you're probably going to keep these things, one of these things for years and years and years to come. It's not like a bulb where you have to replace it. So good as far as light output. So. The Epson 12000, LS12000 has light output of 2700 lumens for, I believe, color and white. So 2700 lumens versus 2000 lumens. And the contrast ratio on this, I believe, is 2.5 million to 1. This one is infinite. I don't know what that means. That's just what it says on the website. So, you know, maybe you can reach out to Sony and find out what that means so 2700 lumens output it's going to get really 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 bright on the epson and then 2000 lumens on the sony so the sony you know it gets beat there it doesn't have as many lumens still should look really good you know but let's see resolution this one is a 4k e-shift which the e-shift has been improved over the previous versions i think this one does like four times it shifts the pixels or something or stretches the pixels or something like that but this is e-shift so it does you know 4k this one is native 4k so no e-shifting this is straight out of the box so this one's probably going to have a better picture than the epson but the epson still still looks very very good like i was very impressed when i was when i was using this all right what about dolby vision well, as you know, there is no projectors, long throw projectors that support Dolby Vision. However, this one supports HDR10+, Plus, so that's Dolby Vision's direct competitor. HDR10+, Plus is open sourced. However, I believe this one, uh, HDR10+, Plus is only capable of 10-bit color versus Dolby Vision that's 12-bit color. This does not support HDR10+, Plus. however, it does support IMAX Enhanced. Now, I think there's still some not a lot known about IMAX Enhanced versus something like HDR10 Plus or Dolby Vision, but you know you still should get a really good picture with this. All right, tone mapping. So the Sony has its own tone mapping, and you know each company calls their tone mapping something different. The Epson has HLG, I forget what it's called, but they both do some level of tone mapping. I'm assuming that the Sony is going to look much better with the the tone mapping than you know, your Epson, especially since this is going to be native 4K, and we all know Sony makes amazing displays. Which brings me to the chip inside. All right, so the Sony has the X1 Ultimate chip. I don't remember what the name of the chip that they're using on Epson, but I will put it on screen so that you can see that. But again, the X1 chip is probably gonna gonna smoke smoke this thing because you know the X1 Ultimate. I don't know if they're putting that in TVs or not, but the X1 chip is already amazing. So. It has that there. Now, 3D support. Neither one of these projectors support 3D for the, for you 3D you know enthusiasts out there, loyalists. 
it is sad that 3D has pretty much died. I believe JVC and maybe some other projectors have, projector companies are still doing 3D. I believe on the Sony 5000, if you move up to the 6000, I believe that one has 3D, but no 3D support on this. So what's interesting about these two projectors is that they're priced relatively the same, kind of in the same realm between, you know, somewhere in that $5,000 $5, range. However, this is Sony's entry level into the laser, the 5000ES, and this is Epson's flagship. So this is the Epson LS12000B. The one, the step down below that would be the 11, the 11,000, which there's not a whole lot of difference other than contrast ratio, lumens, and maybe a couple of other things. So I believe that's pretty much like the big name specs. They both do 3840 by 2160. Again, the Sony is gonna be native 4K. This one is gonna be E-Shift. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys some demos and try to see if I can help you decide on which one you should buy. Now, obviously, you know, maybe if you're an Epson loyalist and you love, you know, you know brighter picture, Maybe you, that's that's all you need to know. Or maybe if you're a Sony loyalist and you, you want you know that, that native 4K, that crisp picture, maybe that's all you need to know. But for those who want to go more in depth, I'm gonna try to do that here with the LS12000 and the Sony 5000ES. Oh, and one big thing that I forgot to mention is on the, the lens and the lens cover. So on the Epson, you're gonna get completely, everything is gonna be electronic that you can you know the the lens cover is going to be electronic you don't have to manually take that on a cover you don't have to put it on or take it off and then being able to you know focus everything is 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 digital you're going to be able to go into the with the remote and go into the settings and move everything you know digitally on the sony 5000 the lens cover as you can see is manual you do have to take that off so you know, at that price point to me, that's a little bit disappointing. I feel like they should have went, you know, with an electronic lens cover. And then on the manual focus on this one, this is also a manual focus. So if you're somebody that doesn't want to deal with manual focus, then obviously, you know, this is going to be a big selling point. But again, you know, don't focus just on that. I want to focus on the, the picture quality and which one which one really performs well now just to give you a reference i have a silver ticket 100 inch screen but i am going to be upgrading that to a stewart film screen 100 inch i believe it's a 130 studio tech but i don't know by the time that you're seeing this i doubt that i will have that screen but when i do up that upgrade that screen you know, whichever one of these projectors that I have, this one I actually have to ship out tomorrow or on Monday, so I'm not gonna have this, but I will have the Sony for a while. And probably this is gonna be the one that I'm gonna end up, you know, purchasing later. But just to let you know, I am using, you know, a, a silver ticket screen right now, but in the future I will have a Stuart film screen. So let's go ahead and get you guys some demos. All right, real quick, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, RVP. Plus. Now, if you're like me and you do a lot of editing or you've got multiple laptops or even desktops, maybe you have you know, a MacBook Pro, maybe you have a Windows PC, whether it's a, a tower or a laptop, you know how important it is to have extra ports and to have a hub, especially for your laptops because laptops nowadays don't have a lot of ports on them. So it makes it easier to have something like this. So what this is, is it's pretty much a hub. So on the back, it has some ports. So we've got two USB 3.0 ports, and then we've got two HDMIs. We've got one display port. We've got an ethernet, gigabit ethernet port. We've got our DC 20 volt, and then there's a USB-C in. And then on the front, we have our power button. We've got a couple SD card slots. We've got a headphone jack two USB-C's and another USB 3.0. So I've used numerous iterations of these different brands and I'm really excited to use this one because it has 
where it supports power over USB-C. So basically all you need is one USB-C cable from this to your MacBook and not only will it provide power but then you'll be able to transfer you know all your data over this. So really cool you know RVP they did reach out to me and ask me if I would be interested in you know giving this a shot see if I like it and if I do then you know I'll recommend it to you guys. So I did get this for free I do get to keep it however they're not reviewing this video and as always I'm going to give you my honest thoughts. All right, so I'm here in my office at my editing station using the RVP Plus, and yeah, I gotta say it's legit. It charges my work laptop as well as my personal laptop with just one cable. It makes life so much easier. I don't have to plug in power cord anymore. I've got plenty of ports for you know plugging in hard drives, thumb drives, whatever else I need. I get internet, and yeah, it's good. I like it. It's much better than the one that I had before. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description where you can purchase this on Amazon. So for this review, we're going to focus on contrast, brightness, black levels, and detail. The movie clips and still images I've chosen that will be used for comparison on both projectors are Aquaman, War for the Planet of the Apes. Dune. And Top Gun Maverick. All video footage and images were played back on my Zidu Z9X and were captured using my Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II mirrorless camera. And both projectors were set to their respective movie profiles with no changes to any other settings. So here we have Aquaman on the LS12000B and we're going to talk about this a little bit more but in the clouds you've got some detail that could be a little bit better. But the image is very, very bright. Very good brightness. HDR is good as well. And we're going to pause it right about here. And then we're going to play the Sony. So if you'll notice in the Sony, there's much more detail in the clouds. The HDR is better. You get some better HDR in the clouds. Now, it's not going to be as bright as the Epson, obviously, because it's 2700 lumens versus 2000 lumens. But you get a much more natural picture with the Sony here. Now if we take a look here in the clouds you'll see on the left is the Sony and on the right is the Epson and you have way more detail in the clouds on the Sony and even the picture color, prof color profile is different. I haven't changed any settings this is just out of the box but the Epson has almost kind of like a greenish tint to it whereas the Sony just looks more natural. So we're back on the Sony and I've got it paused on this scene here. So you can see how natural the colors look on the Sony. And if you look on the left, you can kind of make out a little bit of detail behind that water fountain. There's like a cloud and then you can see like the shoreline. But then when we go to the Epson, it's a little bit more blown out on the left. And again, the color profile is different. Now, I'm just using the standard like movie profiles on each respective projector. I haven't changed any settings. Obviously, with the Epson, you can go in and dial this in because you can do some calibrating. So... I could dial this in to make it look better, but I just want to show you what it looks like out of the box. Obviously the, the Epson is going to be much brighter again, but the Sony just has a little bit more natural color and you know look to it. If you're enjoying this video, make sure you do me a solid and hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Hit the like button if you found this video helpful and hit the bell notifications to be notified as soon as I release new videos. And for extra channel content, Check out my Patreon page and consider subscribing for a low monthly fee.
All right, so now we have the Epson on the left and on the right we have the Sony. Now it's not the exact frame, but it's pretty close. So if we take a look, we can see the black levels are much, much better on the Sony versus the Epson. Now, there is a little bit of, of detail that is lost on, on the Sony, but you know I'm sure you, you could rectify that. But if we take a look at the color profiles too, again, the Epson has like this weird, like, greenish yellowish color to it and you know the sony just looks a little bit more natural but the black levels are much better on the sony again on the left we have the epson and on the right we have the sony so i'm going to let this scene play out because it has some really good contrast and some black levels but again if you look on the right at the sony the fire just looks much more natural you know the the the, the contrast looks better you've got much better darkness on the Sony. You do lose a little bit of detail because on the Sony, the, the Epson is brighter, but you can see the, the image looks a little bit more washed out on the darker scenes on the on the Epson. But again, you can go and, and dial both of these in in the settings and get a pretty good image. I just wanted to show you what both of these look like out of the box. All right, so I have a still image here of Dune. And this scene is really good because you get to, to look at a couple of things, multiple things here in one scene. So we're going to look at brightness, black levels, and contrast. So on the left, we have the Sony. And then on the right, we have the Epson. So if we look at the black levels, you can see the black levels, again, are much better on the Sony than the Epson. But then if we look at the brightness, you get much brighter, much more brightness on the Epson than you do the Sony, but then if you look at that background on the Sony, you have much more detail. There's a cleaner image. You can make out a lot more of the background versus the the Epson, which there is. You can see the background, but you lose a lot of detail. It looks a little bit more washed out than the Sony. So the Sony is going to have that more natural image versus the Epson that's got that kind of a weird color profile. But again, you know, this is straight out of the box. You can go into both of these projectors and dial it in. And I feel like with that Kalman calibration that the Epson has, you can go in there and really dial in, you know, the settings and, and get it looking how you want to. Also, I have the Spears and Munsell, you know, HD calibration disc. So I'm going to use that on the Epson. I don't have the Sony anymore right now, but I have the Epson that I'm probably going to end up, you know, purchasing and keeping for my projector just because it works for my needs. And so I can go in there and adjust, you know, the color profiles, black levels. You're not going to get as good as an image like with the Sony because it's just, it's just a better lens, better chip. But I wanted to give you guys a side by side of how these projectors look straight out of the box. Haven't changed any settings. And then the last thing that I want to look at here is color profile and detail. Now you probably won't be able to see, well, you won't be able to see what I'm seeing here because this video is being uploaded and compressed via YouTube, but I wanted to highlight the color profile and a little bit of detail. So on the right, we have the Sony 5000 ES and on the left we have the Epson and again the color profiles are vastly different without having changed any settings without dial dialing them in the Sony on the right you get a much more natural image on the skin tones the lighting versus the Epson on the left you've got that weird color profile again this one has more of like a bluish a little bit more like a greenish tint in this scene and then on detail, and I don't know if you can make this out on the video, but there's much more detail on Tom Cruise's face on the right, obviously with the Sony versus the Epson. Now, I will say that even though there's more detail, the picture quality is better. These projectors are actually very close. I don't think it's like this massive difference in between them, but there are differences and, you know, I want to try to help you to make a good decision to see which one you should buy. The Epson is going to give you much more brightness at 2700 lumens versus 2000 lumens with the, the Sony, but the Sony is going to give you better black levels, a better image, you know, you're going to get better contrast and stuff like that. But 
you can still dial in the Epson and get a very good image. You can come very close. I just think that the Epson is just never going to match the Sony as far as, you know, that natural look. But if you've got a calibrator or you know what you're doing, you can go in and, and calibrate that Epson. You can get a very, very good image. Even out of the box, I'm happy with it. Now, I wouldn't have known these differences between the two if I didn't do, you know, some side by side comparisons. Obviously, I don't have a room big enough to have two screens directly side by side, but being able to record these images on camera and then look at them side by side, I was like, wow, there really is, you know, a considerable difference. But if you're just getting either one of these projectors out of the box, you're not going to know that, you know, one projector has a different color profile than the other one or that the Epson has a little bit more greener tint. But again, both of these are excellent projectors that you can go in and, you know, pretty much customize, especially with the Epson. You can go in there, you can get that Kalman software and really dial in the settings to how you want and what you need for your setup. All right. Now, I really like this scene from Top Gun because even though it's a very dark scene, you get to see how much brighter the Epson is over the Sony and, you know, even though it's not like a bright, bright scene, you still get some some good contrast. So obviously you can see on the Epson, it's much brighter than the blues. And even though it's brighter, it doesn't look like unnatural. It just, it kind of makes John Hamm look like a somebody from the Blue Man Group. <laughs> but you will get that more natural image on the Sony 5000 ES. Now, if we take a look at the black levels, you're going to get obviously better blacks on the Sony. But the Epson isn't isn't struggling too much in this scene. The black levels are actually pretty good. And again, you know, there's a little bit of detail that's lost on the Sony just because it's so it's the black levels are so dark. But again, you can go in there in the settings and, and you know, adjust that, customize that how you want to. I don't know which one is going to give you better customization. Maybe the Epson just because it's capable of being Kalman calibrated. But if we look at those lights in the background, you know, those blurt lights, again, the Sony gives you a little bit better natural looking image, even though the lights are, are blurred out. But I think both projectors look very good in the scene. I actually don't mind the, the brightness of the, the Epson in this scene, but you know, it's all going to depend on what you like, what you like for your eyes. I will say that it looks like there is a little bit more detail in John Hamm's face on the left again in the dark scenes you do lose some detail on the sony you can see some some more a little bit more images and detail on the epson on the right just because it's a little bit brighter but i still feel like john ham's face on the left has a little bit more detail on it and a more natural image and then here's just a quick scene of top gun maverick side by side so you can get a better Better picture of what you know it looks like the Sony on the right and then the Epson on the left. Alright, so that's my comparison of the Epson LS12000B versus the Sony 5000 ES. Now I was gonna go through this whole grading system, but this video was more for you guys. So I want you guys to get a discussion going in the comments. Let me know what you think of both of these projectors. What are your thoughts on contrast, brightness? black levels, and detail. Let me know if this video was helpful to you in making a decision between the LS12000B and the 5000ES. And if you want to pick up either of these projectors or any other cool home theater gear, check out the Grid Hi-Fi. The Grid Hi-Fi is the largest showroom in Texas for home theater and home audio. At the Grid Hi-Fi, we cater to the discerning audiophile and electronic lifestyle. Subscribe to the Grid Hi-Fi YouTube channel for regular content and check out our Instagram page as well. But if you're in the Houston area, come check out the Grid Hi-Fi in person, or you can check us out online 24-7 at www.gridhifi.com. And don't forget to let them know the Hater Rate Cowboy sent you. Thank you for watching, and as always, no matter where you're at on your home theater journey, make sure you enjoy it. For Hater Rate Cowboy Cinema, I'm Hater Rate Cowboy, and I'll see you guys in the next video.